Hi everyone, so the book I'm going to be reading is Beyond the Bright Sea by Lauren Walk. It took us a while to locate the other bundle of treasure, since the storm had dragged it some distance and torn away the boy that had marked where we left it. But I was a naval diver and found it one morning in August when the light was just so, the water calm and clear, the lobster trap we stashed in it just deep enough that I thought my eardrums might burst as I laced a rope through its lats and struck out for the surface. Osh, waiting above in the skiff, grabbed the rope and hauled me aboard where I grasped and kicked like a sea robin on a hook. Remember, he said, as he tied it fast again, it's the boy with the extra long stem. We agreed to pull it frequently to check on the treasure and to convince anyone watching that it was a true lobster trap and nothing more. We won't leave it here through another big storm, though, will we? I asked. Osh shrugged his usual shrug. I suppose not, he said, but it's really up to you. And he meant it. I knew that, and I felt taller at the thought. Then maybe I'll see if it's meant to be mine, I said, and give it away like you said before. But without such a lot of fuzz and mystery, Ash nodded. Like sending a baby to sea in a skiff, he said. I nodded, or coming here under a blue sail. While the treasure stayed safely under the sea, I stayed with Ash and Miss Maggie on the Elizabeths and learned how the stars changed with the seasons and how we did too. Jason never did come there to find me. I thought about writing to Miss Pelham to ask if he's been back to see her, to ask if she told him about me, but I didn't. I was afraid he might have chosen to let sleeping dogs lie, but I wasn't a dog, sleeping or otherwise, and I still hoped I'd cross his path someday. Some of the treasure I kept in case Jason ever did come to find me, half of it at least was his, and a little of it I held back for me and Osh and Miss Maggie for when we might really need it. Some I sent to Miss Evelyn for the Leapers in Carvel, Louisiana, along with a necklace just for her. I asked her not to tell anyone where it had came from, to spend the treasure quietly, bit by bit. With Miss Maggie's help, I wrapped pieces of it in newsprint, took them into plain little boxes with no return address, and sent them off to orphanages far and wide. You aren't worried that whoever opens these will simply keep what's inside, Miss Maggie asked, as we packed up the treasure in small portions and sealed the boxes right. I shrugged. What would you do if you opened one of these and knew how much food it would buy for those babies? Grow, Miss Maggie said, her eyebrows high. You have to ask? Of course not, I said. And I figure anyone taking care of babies in an orphanage is probably a lot like you. And if they weren't, there wasn't a thing I could do about that. At some point during those long golden years, Osh told me that he had given me another name when I was new to him. Besides Crow, I asked. He nodded. Besides crow in your other language, I asked. He nodded again. What was it? What is it, you mean? I thought back and back. What is will be, I answered. It doesn't matter much since I'm here now and I have a name, I smiled at him. You don't want to know what it is? I made a face. Of course I do, Osh. So he told me. It was another of his foreign musical words and I vowed to learn how to say this one properly. What does it mean, I asked him. Whatever you want it to mean, he said. I told you a long time ago. What you do is who you are. I thought back over all I've done since I spied that first fire on Penisky and let it touch a wick inside me. I decided that I knew what it meant, that name. When I said daughter, he smiled and I put his open hand on my head. Just like Osh, I said, means father. So I decided to read that specific chapter from the book um, because it sends a really good message that Blood isn't always important in a family. Throughout the book, we can see how Crow worries too much and wants to learn more about where she came from, who her biological parents are. And in the end, when she finds out who her parents are, she, she also realizes that she almost lost what she had. Um, James Kendall almost kidnapped Miss Maggie and Osh and threatened to kill them. And she realized that what she had was valuable. And in the end, she realizes that Osh is someone who had taken care of her her whole life and also Miss Maggie, so she tr learns about the true meaning of what family really is. That is why I selected the last chapter to read.